now does a car project which Volkswagen rejected, featuring an underwhelming engine by Audi, end up giving Porsche a top six finish at Le Mans, and birthing a now cherished homologation special. Welcome to the story of the 924 Carrera GT. Historically, Porsche had conducted much of Volkswagen's research and development, but when Volkswagen pulled a project for a flagship sports car in the wake of the 1973 oil crisis, it was Porsche who sniffed an opportunity to incorporate the technology they had developed into their own range and replace the aging 914. One million Deutschmarks bought Porsche the rights to a front-engined, water-cooled sports coupe design with a rear-mounted transaxle. A far cry, of course, from the architecture of the 911. Mandated within the package was obligatory use of Audi's two-litre inline four-cylinder engine and an agreement for assembly of the cars to take place at one of Audi's own factories. Hardly surprising then that this car later struggled to be accepted as a true Porsche. Launched in 1976, the public appreciated the first iteration of the 924, particularly for its exceptional handling balance. But it was clear that with just 125 brake horsepower, the prosaic power plant was barely scratching the surface of the exceptional chassis' potential. It took until 1979 for Porsche to properly address this with the introduction of the 924 Turbo, which packed an extra 40-odd brake horsepower. But still, the chassis with its near-perfect weight distribution demanded so much more, and a decision was taken to develop the car further and homologate it for Group 4 racing. Attendees to the 1979 Frankfurt Motor Show were treated to a preview of the newly renamed 924 Carrera GT, which proudly showed off its newly muscular physique and the coveted Carrera script on its flank. Porsche also announced a three-car works entry for the following year's Le Mans 24 Hours which theoretically obligated them to produce 400 examples of this fantastic new homologation special in an unrealistically short window of time. A feat which, of course, they were never going to manage. But they did, in the end, satisfy the rules and built 406 of these Carrera GTs. They were very popular and it's not at all difficult to understand why. We've got 1180 kilograms, 210 brake horsepower, which although not much was reasonable for the time. 207 foot-pounds of torque, not too bad. But what really matters, the one statistic that I'm most interested in, is that near perfect 49-51% weight distribution, which gives the car its exceptional balance. Admittedly, the turbo lag is pretty dreadful, which is why you don't want to get caught in the wrong gear coming into one of these mountain switchbacks. But get it all spooled up in time, open the throttle early, Exit with peak revs, about five and a half thousand. And the 924 does slingshot out of the corner. But it's in these faster third and fourth gear switchbacks where the balance really comes alive. It's heavy on the steering, there's no power assistance. You've got to have your wits about you to make sure you get the car rotated sufficient time. It's these long, 
open corners that I really love. It's ever so progressive and as they tighten up, you can just chuck in a little bit of extra lock. Safe in the knowledge that if the rear does move, it's all happening in a very manageable, very predictable way. The front end is absolutely pinned on entry, especially with just a little bit of a trail brake. As I peel back that brake pressure, there's ever such a mild, aggressive understeer. It's not frustrating at all. It's not in any way restrictive. What this car loves is momentum. Keep the revs high, keep that turbo spooled, keep the rolling speed up really comes into its own. But the gearbox is nice. The synchromesh doesn't slow things down too much. It feels very light between the cogs, nice and direct. The driving position is hugely comfortable actually. The seats are fantastic. The view is open. I've got the lovely pop of the bonnet air scoop just protruding into my field of view through the windscreen, which I love. I can completely understand how the early iterations of the 924 positively begged for more power. It's a really capable little chassis. And Derek Bell, who famously was given one as part of his Porsche contract when he was racing for them in period and still has it today, often describes it as a super little car. And he's not wrong, it really is. And even though this homologation special has got a very reasonable 210 brake horsepower, it can handle so much more. Le Mans is normally a circuit that really rewards horsepower but the 1980 edition of the great race started wet, very wet. And thanks to the sublime handling of the 924, the trio of Porsches that had qualified in a lowly position outside of the top 40 took little more than an hour or so to ascend into the top 15. In fact, by breakfast time on Sunday morning, Derek Bell and his co-driver Al Hobart were lying an astonishing fifth position overall. Sadly, their car blew a piston and they had to limp to the flag. But Jürgen Barth and Manfred Schultz enjoyed a trouble-free run to an astonishing sixth position finish. A year later, Barth, back in the 924 with Walter Roll now at his side, won the GTP class. to think, isn't it, that a car as capable as this, and one which has earned such racing pedigree, languished relatively unloved by the collecting community for so many years. It was even disparagingly referred to as the poor man's Porsche. Which is odd because the 924 was a sales success, and especially so was the 944 that it sired which is why I'm so happy to see these cars, particularly the Carrera GT, finally and rightfully having their moment in the sun.